Thing. My guest, Samir Gokli of Keith Briet and Wood. Samir, uh, expert in the world of CIT. You go away, you tell me you were away for a while, you came back, all this news broke. What's going on with CIT? How much debt is maturing and what's the problem? Well, basically, the company has uh, approximately 12 billion or so of debt maturing through the end of calendar 2010. Um, the problem is that you know, CIT had applied for a bank holding company status and they received that approval at the end of 2008. They got a capital infusion of $2.3 billion from the Treasury at the end of 2008. And then they were looking for some assistance from the FDIC in terms of guarantees on their debt issuance. And so, that is was, Sheila, so is Sheila Bear coming to the rescue on a, on, a, on a white horse here? Well, we don't know. That's what the problem is, because it's July now and she hasn't come to the rescue. And, you know, I think most people, uh, myself included, thought it was pretty much a given that the company would receive access to this help from the FDIC, and they haven't received it so far. So the question is, will she be willing to provide the help at this point, or is there something else holding up the process? So is this just now a government turf battle? It's possible. I mean, clearly, uh, you know, the Treasury has an interest in helping CIT, given its $2.3 billion investment uh, in the preferred shares. They've already got skin in the game. They've al already got skin in the game. Now, the question is whether the FDIC wants to take on the responsibility of guaranteeing CIT's debt. And the FDIC seems to be saying, we're worried about credit risk, and we don't want to take on that responsibility. This is your problem. You, the Treasury, you deal with it. So why convert to the bank holding status in the first place, then, if you weren't going to get access to all the benefits of being a bank holding company? That is a key question. I mean, what well, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but it would seem like, you know, back at the end of December when CIT got bank holding company status and access to the TARP capital, if there were going to be any objection to them getting this, this help from the FDIC, I think Sheila Bear and the FDIC should have raised a red flag at that point in time, saying you can give them the treasury capital, the uh, preferred investment, you can give them bank holding company status, but we're not going to give them this guarantee. I, I don't know if that flag was ever raised. When, when you look at what's going on with the company, I mean, do you just shake your head? Because it's not as if, I mean, all they had to do is read your reports. I mean, this was not something, there hasn't been a signature event that happened in the last week. Yeah, there really hasn't been anything. I mean, if you, if it's just been press reports talking about how the FDIC may be unwilling to provide this guarantee to CIT. There were some headlines about CIT hiring a bankruptcy attorney, but I mean, that's a big, uh, you know, we really don't know what's going on there. Apparently, the attorney is a counsel uh, for CIT, and they've been on retainer for, for, you know, quite a while, several years, in fact. But there's been all this speculation. Will CIT file for bankruptcy? Will they get help from the FDIC? What's going to happen to them in the future? So for some reason, all of that has come to a head within the last week or so. And this also uh, concurrent with what? Uh, Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo offering them what? A senior credit facility? Well, yeah, this was offered to them, I think, sometime in, in the first quarter, or maybe even before that, a $3 billion secured facility from Goldman, $500 million from Wells, Wells Fargo. But these, were, these are secured facilities, meaning they have hard assets backing them. So they're not really taking on that much risk in my opinion. Uh, the most important issue at hand is, is CIT going to get assistance from the government and what form is that going to take? And are we going to end up with like AIG redux, do you think? It's possible. I mean, there are various outcomes here. You know, CIT could file for bankruptcy, in fact, but that may not be the best outcome for the government because of the Treasury's investment. Uh, perhaps the Treasury, the FDIC, and the Federal Reserve engineer some sort of sale of the company to a larger bank, providing guarantees to the acquirer, saying, uh, you know, we'll, we'll engineer the sale, but we'll guarantee you against uh, losses. Um, and then otherwise, it's possible that the, uh, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury just provide some sort of financial assistance directly to CIT, bypass the FDIC, and help it solve its problems in the near term. Do you notice that there are any competitors who are dying to get into the CIT business? I mean, won't there be a lot of demand for the loan products that CIT at least used to be able to offer. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, I think there will be a void um, if CIT is, it goes away as a competitor. Um, the question is, will other companies come in and fill that void? And, you know, the fact of the matter is CIT has been operating as a standalone company for 100 years. I mean, there have been some changes in between acquisitions and the like, but it doesn't really feel like the large banks have ever thought, wow, this is a great idea, let's expand in there. If that had been the case, I don't think CIT really would have ever How been How about a General Electric and their, and their lending operations? They, they do like compete that. with CIT. That's absolutely true. GE is one of the, I think, the direct beneficiaries if CIT is, is not available as a competitor. But then again, I think GE, you know, they 
they've been de-emphasizing their whole commercial finance business. So the question is, how much do they really want to step in and fill the void when they're trying to shrink their finance business? If you were Jeffrey Peak, and, and I'm sure he's got a lot of things to do, he's the, he's the chairman, he's running uh, CIT, sure. what, what would be the best strategy right now? Well, it depends on what, what constituents you're looking at. I mean, I think the best strategy is to try to appeal to the Treasury and to the Federal Reserve and say, okay, the FDIC really isn't helping us out. You know, we're extremely important to middle market companies, largest factoring operation in North America, largest small business association lender. So we're important to the economy, to small businesses. We've got an investment from you. All we need is something to tide us through this tough time in the economy. So help us out here with some sort of federal assistance. What kind of number are you talking about? How much? Uh, I mean, I, they're, they're looking for $10 billion under the TLGP, the funding from the FDIC. So if they get a similar sort of guarantee uh, from, the, from the Treasury or the Federal Reserve for $10 billion, I think that solves their problems. It takes the, the zero off the table. What about the stock? Does that go to zero soon? Well, I think if they provide a guarantee uh, of that sort, you know, they get it from the Treasury or the Federal Reserve, it takes a zero off the table, and I think the, sh the shares will rally, assuming there are no preconditions. But if that comes with the condition of you have to do a large dilutive capital raise at these levels, then I think we're talking about some, some other issues with the stock. Sounds a little bit uh, reminiscent of, of AIG. We've got to follow the, the, the situation closely. Thanks very much. Sure. Uh, Samir Gokli coming in uh, from Kipriot and was giving us your insight into what's going on at the CIT. We've got to you. have you back shortly to follow what's going on.